What's going on guys? Fun with Knives back again and I think it's finally time for me to do a review on the War Admiral. Now, I've tried doing this video in the past and it just turns out to be way too long. So I don't want to make this a 30 minute video if I don't have to. So rather than doing that, I want to do a final thoughts video. Just kind of touch on some of the key points of this knife that I really like, tell you guys about my experience with it because this War Admiral has seen a whole lot of pocket time, you can probably tell and a whole lot of use. I think a lot of people are interested in this blade, and rightfully so, so I thought I'd share my story with it. Now, I'm gonna spew out the specs to you guys real quick, and then I'm gonna keep this video under 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna, at the 10 minute mark, I'm gonna to have to end it, hopefully I'm wrapped up by then, because I've tried way too many times to talk about this knife, because I do love it. And it seems like once I get going talking about it, 20 minutes goes by and I don't even notice. So. The blade length on the War Admiral is 3.75 inches. Your handle length is 4.75 inches, making your overall length eight and a quarter. It's a pretty good size knife as far as length goes. Your blade thickness on this guy is 0.16 inches, and the steel is CPM S35VN. It's good steel, nice stocky blade. The handle thickness is 0.49 inches, so under half an inch. And this happens to be the blurple anodized titanium version, and it is stepped. Just have those ridges along the entire face of both scales. Now, the War Admiral comes in a variety. I mean, a plethora of different designs. I mean, not as different designs, different variations as far as color and materials. Now, there is flat titanium scales um, that have been anodized different colors. There's different anodized colors in the stepped titanium like this one. Um, there are now, now carbon fiber versions. I have a carbon fiber show scale. And there's been tons that have been customized. I mean, they've had regrinds on the blade and look completely different. There's different blade finishes. I mean, there's all sorts of War Admirals out there. So if you do like this knife and you want one after watching this video, then I highly suggest that you go check out VDK Co. on Instagram. Um, Google Vlad Domazerov Knives. See where you can find them because I know... Blade HQ, Knife Center, a lot of those places have the pretty basic models. Uh, but if you want something cooler, definitely check out Blades 101. And I believe there's a site for VDK. I'll put all the links in the description box below to help your search if you're interested in getting yourself a War Admiral. Now, the weight on this guy is 5.63 ounces, which seems a little heavy for this length of knife, and I would have to agree with you, but there's a whole lot of steel here. I mean, look how much steel is really in that blade. So, it's not overly heavy. It's not something to to really complain about, but I mean, it's noticeable in your pocket. It's not a, you know, a feather light knife like a Delica or something like that. You will feel this from time to time. So instead of going from tip to bottom, I'm just going to kind of talk about some of my favorite features and just a couple I'm not in love with. Now, I think the best feature of this knife, of course, is its uniqueness. There's nothing that I'm aware of in the knife market that looks quite like a War Admiral. Every time I see one of these knives on Instagram, I immediately know that it's a War Admiral made by VDK. There's nothing that's similar to this that was copied, anything like this. This is a completely unique design, and I think there's some beauty in that. But from a functional standpoint, guys, the action on this is nothing short of incredible. It has a ceramic ball detent as well as, as, well as ceramic bearings, and the action is ultra smooth and truly drop shut because of the weight of that blade and the smoothness of those ceramic bearings. Now, the flipper tab, pretty well positioned, pretty well shaped. It's got some jimping on the top. It will accept either a light switch or a push button once you get a little bit of practice and it does come rocketing out of there. Now, the descent is not dialed in quite as much as I, I would like and I think this is more of a personal preference issue because as you can see this knife fires and locks up every time I don't have a problem with that at all I just wish the detent was a little bit stiffer this is a heavy blade and it takes a little bit of work to get it out there so if that detent was a little bit heavier we we'll call it that then I think this blade would be even just a tiny bit better but something good to note is that this titanium frame lock does have a steel frame lock insert so you have steel on steel contact and that lock bar tension is actually pretty high and at first I was not too fond of that you can see this takes a little bit of work to even move that lock bar over but as I use the knife and as it has developed absolutely no blade play 
I'm kind of in love with that lock bar tension. I want this knife to lock up nice and tight and keep that cleaver away from my fingers. So I do like the lock up quite a bit. It's nice and solid. I like that they're using ceramic ball bearings and uh, detent ball. And I believe this is titanium hardware. I really should ask Vlad before I made this final review, but I do believe that this is titanium hardware and this thing comes apart in a breeze, super easy. I do love the anodization work on this particular model. You can see all those snail trails in that titanium. And a lot of people hate that. I mean, it's kind of inevitable once you have anodized titanium, but I think it looks pretty cool. I like the wear on knives. It shows some character that they've, they've been somewhere, you know, they've accomplished some work and they've, you know, been with me in a lot of scenarios, which is really cool. Now, the blade, of course, I'm not going to forget, is this monstrous cleaver, almost four inches of S35VN. A beautiful stone wash on it, nice saber grind, VDK on this side, and completely sterile on this side, with nicely chamfered hole that you can use for opening. You can use it, kind of roll your thumb out there, you can flick it out, if I can actually do that. It's been a while. And then, of course, you can spider flick it which might be my favorite. So it's not just aesthetic, it is a fully functioning opening oval. So I do love the finish on this blade, and that was one thing I was kind of skeptical when I initially got this knife, was how functional this blade was truly gonna be. Because it's heavy, it's wide, and it's a little thick. But to be honest, guys, it's fairly thin behind the edge. I mean, it's not an ultra slicer, but this thing performs very well as an EDC blade shape. In fact, if you took the meat off of this blade, it's just kind of a reverse tanto. It's just, you know, a Warncliffe. And a lot of people like those style of blade shapes for an everyday carry knife. Now, I love this blade. I do. I didn't think it would be my style. I didn't think I'd be too into it, but I do. It's so much more functional than it looks. And I mean, it really looks the part too. So, blade I'm in love with, action I'm in love with, <laughs> the lockup I'm in love with, ergonomics, you guessed it, also in love with. You got these two finger placements for your first two fingers. It's got this nice raindrop shape to it with that terracing to aid and a little bit of grip. And guys, it's just so comfortable. And this saber grip or hammer grip, it just feels natural to cut with this blade with just that gradual belly. So, I wish I could touch on everything here, guys. Fit and finish on this model, it is a mid tech. Would it, take that for what it's worth. Um, I know everybody has a different definition of that, but the blade centering is absolutely perfect. The action has not diminished since the day I got it. The hardware is not soft whatsoever. The lockup, like I said, has not been altered as I don't know how long it's been. Months have gone by of continual use. You can see that anal job is actually holding up pretty well. There's quite a few scratches on the clip, but that is to be expected. The clip is fully functional unless you have ultra thick pants. So I, do, I wouldn't worry about the clip. It has some good spring to it. Actually stays in your pocket quite well. Now that we're almost done with this 10 minute video, I guess I can talk about a couple of things that I'm not entirely fond of. This hardware, the body screw hardware, there's two screws on either side, are not exactly um, flush with the rest of the knife. Now that is kind of a problem with, I don't know. It, you barely feel it in hand and I don't think it prevents any sort of functional issue. It's just something that I wish wasn't there. I wish those screws were completely flush with the rest of the, the knife. I don't know if they could actually make that happen with how this terracing has turned out, but I, th I think it's more of a nitpicky issue than anything because as I've spent more time with this knife, I've inevitably tried to find faults with it because I am a knife reviewer. I mean, I gotta give you guys an honest review, but really there's no issues with construction. I mean, whatsoever, the knife is built beautifully well. I mean, it's the design is somehow appealing to look at functional and ridiculous all on the same knife. And I really don't understand how Vlad did that, but I will congratulate him on that. So other than the detent being a tiny bit soft for my preference, the hardware sticking up just a little bit too much, I think on the body itself. And then you have that nice titanium backspacer, forgot to mention. And one more thing, Oh yeah, it's really wide in the pocket right here. Not absurdly so, not uncarryable, but it is something to note. If you want the monstrous cleaver, you're gonna have to deal with that shape, that horn in your pocket. But I think that's it guys. I love this knife. And if you guys do, I definitely suggest picking one up. So 
Thanks for watching as always. And remember, have fun with your knives. And damn it, I went over 10 minutes. <laughs>